Alrighty, so as a personal electronic vehicle enthusiast, I thought it'd be uh, fun to talk about my favorite or what I think is the best personal form of personal electronic vehicle and what is the worst personal electronic vehicle that you can get. Just my opinion, almost no facts, but it's just my opinion. So let's get started. All right, number seven, we've got the hover shoes. All right, so based on the specs, it looks like these hover shoes can go seven, eight miles an hour. Okay, they're super portable. They look neat, but mm, I think they'd have a lot of trouble going over cracks. I think that would be neat in an office if you work in a very large office space, um, you know, maybe getting around, not, I, I wouldn't even say getting around campus. That wouldn't even be good because again, sidewalks have cracks. I don't see a lot of use for these, so right now they are gonna be ranked seven. At number six, I'm going to put the Segway, well, the Segway. There's a lot of different, uh, well, a few different models of Segway. I think its max speed is about 10 miles an hour, 10 to 12. I think some Segways can hit 15. I think Segways are good for people uh, with disabilities, um, people who have trouble getting around, I've seen them in the wild. I've never ridden one, surprisingly, um, but they, they're neat. Uh, they're pretty portable. Um, and they're, again, there's different kinds. I've never seen them on a group ride. I've just seen them randomly. Um, they just, they're not quick enough for a group ride, just like the hover shoes. You, you really can't use them much, but the Segway does have more uses than the hover shoes. So I'm gonna have to put the Segway at number six. Segway. For number five, we've got the e-trike three wheels. I think e-trikes are good for heavier people, um, much heavier people. They can be very useful, very rugged. You can have a big back cargo area where you can carry a lot of stuff. I think they're, they're, it's good for, you know, just transporting stuff and people. Probably good to get around city, but it, the thing with trikes is if you turn it too quick, I have heard people flipping over on them. You can't turn them too quick, uh, but some upper scale trikes, you can actually, they've got some sort of system where you can turn them quick and they'll still stay on all wheels, but those go for a lot more, exp you know, a lot more money. So I would put the trike at number five. That That's nice. Again, for, for my heavier friends, that would be a good option. Go with the trike, e-trike. The shocking number four, this might be a little controversial. I might get some heat for this, but... I'm gonna put e-bikes at number four for personal electronic vehicles. They're bigger, they're heavier, um, but they're super easy, easy to ride. Anybody can ride an e-bike. And with e-bikes, you have all sorts of models, all sorts of sizes. Really, one e-bike is not gonna tell you the story of what other e-bikes can do. There are e-bikes that'll get you 15 miles an hour, 10 to 15, then there are e-bikes that I think go up to 70, maybe even more. Um, I don't like e-bikes only because it, for me, it's boring. E-bikes are boring. You sit on them, the, the bike does all the work. It, there's no balance, there's no real balancing. And yeah, I think that when they do the, um, when they pop the wheelies, that's cool. That shows skill. Still wouldn't be fun enough for me to want to own one. Again, big, bulky, not that portable. Uh, depending on the e-bike you have, it, you know, it might be impossible to transport it in your car. Also, depending on the kind of car you have. So I would put e-bikes at number four, but again, there's so many different models. You, you really can't, one bike is not gonna tell the story of all the bikes, but you see them on group rides, they do just fine. And um, you know, they're able to keep up and they're some of the fastest PEVs you can get, but again, they're not that portable. So even though we're talking about portable electronic vehicles, e-bikes are not that portable. They're a little bit more portable than e-trikes, but still not that portable. So I would put e-bikes at number four. At number three, I've never tried one of these, but for me, they look cool. They sound the coolest. Of all the PVs, I think these things sound the coolest. Uh, E-skates. These are a beast all unto itself. I think these are really cool. The fact that you can, you know, you're basically controlling how fast you go with a remote control. I think that's really neat. That's very unique. And the bigger your tires, the more different kind of terrain you can go on. Of all the PEVs, this is the one I know the least about. <laughs> but I again, I see them on every group ride and they, these things whip. These things go fast. They can go really fast. I wish I can give you more details, but you know, my, my PEV enthusiasts, the real PEV enthusiasts, especially the e-skaters, 
they can tell you all about the about this thing but i would put it at number three based uh, on the fact that again there's so many different kinds there's ones that look like real actual skateboards but the wheels are smaller i prefer the ones with the bigger wheels just because you could do more you can go off curbs probably um and again they're fast they sound cool i don't um i don't have one if i ever get to a point where i have a lot of extra cash maybe i'll buy one i'm just not interested in owning one of these but they're cool i give them their props again for me they're number three of all the pvs um get yourself an e-skate e-skates are e-skates are pretty cool but I, i've seen these uh on group rides usually getting towed by another person on another pv <laughs> so i get you know the range ain't the greatest but again these are these are neat pvs i think that they're probably really fun too um i just never have tried it so yeah we've got the e-skate at number three and at number two the first pev i ever got back in 2014 an electric scooter the one i bought was an eco rico m3 electric scooter i was able to hit 24 25 miles an hour on that thing but it was super sketchy not much for suspension tiny rubber wheels yeah uh, i took a spill once on that thing but i would put e-scooters at number two you just have a, a vast array i think I don't know what which PV has more different forms, whether it's e-scooters or e-bikes, but there's just so many e-scooters from nine mile per hour children e-scooters all the way to scooters that apparently can go 90 miles an hour, which is insane. Uh, right now I've got my eyes on the RS, in motion RS. I'm really liking that one. Um, if things go pretty good next year, I'm, I'm probably gonna uh, get get that that looks like the next scooter i have right now i have an okai neon pro that can do 21 miles an hour uh, it's a really pretty looking scooter unfortunately i think it would be great in new york city in the city i live in it's not fast enough i need you know uh luckily the segway gt1 that i own is fast enough you know that can go 34 miles an hour and i do just fine in my city and that's a beautiful my in my opinion the most beautiful looking scooters are the Segway GT1, GT2. Those are the, you know, they look almost identical. There are some subtle differences, but you want to go on looks. Those two look the best. Spec-wise, there's tons of scooters that'll give you more range, more uh, more speed, a lot more speed. But those Segways are really nice and they've gotten to a price where it's actually reasonable. But there's just so, scooters are just, for me, I still have some fun when I'm on a scooter. They're just really amazing. Again, there's so many different types of scooters that there's really, you can have a scooter with a seat, you can have a scooter without a seat, you can put a little bit of, a little tiny cargo rack in the back. I've seen people put giant speakers on these things. Uh, scooters are just really amazing. And I see a whole diverse, and when I say diverse, I'm not talking about race. I mean, men, women, boys, girls, you know, adults, children, just, that would be boys and girls and men and women. but. You just see all kinds of people riding scooters, and they're a great entry to PEVs. They're pretty portable, much more portable than a bike, and I think they're they they still they're pretty fun. Scooters are pretty fun, and people have fun on them. So I would put e-scooters number two, and number one. What has to be number one? I think it's kind of obvious. Electric unicycle. Flawless victory. Why? Well. Electric unicycles have the biggest learning curve. It's, it's the most intimidating PEV to get on and learn. But when you learn how to ride an EUC, electric unicycle, monocycle, whatever you want to call, when you learn how to ride one of these wonderful little machines, no matter if it's a tiny M10-3 or a big Monster Pro or Master Pro, these wheels are so much fun, so much fun. And you'll never regret learning how to ride one. And actually, out of all the PEVs, those have the most converts. I've seen people go from e-bikes to EUCs. I've seen people, tons of people go from one wheels to EUCs. I've seen people go from e-scooters to EUCs, e-skates to EUCs. Why? Because again, it'll give you a feeling that no other PEV will ever give you. And if you respect the wheel, if you respect its, its speed, its capability, if you become knowledgeable on it, you know, you won't suffer the infamous cutout. Now, nothing is perfect. Accidents happen. 
things can happen and that's why you should gear up. I guess the one negative of electronic unicycles is the fact that you do have to gear up a lot more than you do on other PEVs. That's probably the one negative and a lot of people, they don't wanna gear up that much. But I think gearing up is cool. I think it's cool. You're getting ready to, to go somewhere and you know, it, it reminds me of, you know, when I paid, played football for two weeks, three weeks back in high school. You know, you gear up, you get ready for war. It's kind of like down the EUC, but every EUC, I, I gear up different. So I own five EUCs. So I guess that's the one negative. If you don't really like to wear a lot of stuff, then you might not like an EUC. But to learn an EUC is to fall in love with an EUC. It is the number one pound for pound. You get the best range. You get immense, credible speed. We've got EUCs going 60, 65 miles an hour now that's insane on one wheel and it's definitely if you don't like attention you're not going to like an euc because when people see you on an euc maybe not new york city maybe not san francisco but pretty much almost anywhere else when people see you on an euc they stop and they stare it is just the most fun the most fun by far and it's super portable my m10 3 can fit in, in a backpack and it can go up to 22 23 miles an hour that is insane that is insane it only weighs about the same as its speed. It only weighs about 24, mile, 24 pounds. So again, for portability, functionality, if you can learn how to ride an EUC, you will you will probably sell every other PEV you own. I mean, and you might keep them. Like I still have my e-scooters and I still want to buy another e-scooter, but um, they definitely, e my e-scooters definitely take a backseat to my electronic unicycles when it just comes to the fun factor and use. So at number one, I got to put the electronic unicycle at number one. Just you've got so many different companies competing, which is good. When you have a monopoly, that's bad. Speaking of monopoly, what is the worst PEV you could possibly get? You know what I'm going to say. The one wheel. Right. Fucking thing sucks. This thing might have been cool when it first came out for the first two, three years, maybe even four years. But now it it needs to be buried it needs to be put in the past get rid of it and not not only because the wheel itself is garbage but the fact that it's overpriced and the one company that really sells one wheels the way it treats its customers the people who make them their money is just atrocious it's atrocious and there's videos you can see lewis rossman is one of them there's other people who have made videos on how and I'll say FM because the company I've heard are they're very litigious. And even though I'm a nobody with a tiny, tinky, tiny YouTube channel, who knows? I might get a letter in the mail saying, hey, don't talk about our product. But, you know, let's just say FM, the way they treat their customers. <laughs> I When I still see people on one wheels, I'm like, OK, they're still on a one wheel because they can't afford another PEV or because they're just in denial. And, and I'm not talking about people who ride the one wheel. I've met many one wheel riders. They're all chill, all pretty cool. The only thing I don't understand is you have this loyalty to a company and a product who has no loyalty to you. It's like that guy in the neighborhood who's getting cheated on by his girl and everyone knows it and he still defends her. She's my queen. She'll never do anything. And meanwhile, everyone's telling him like, dude, what are you doing? She doesn't respect you. That's how I look at one wheel owners. <laughs> like, like the company that you're you're putting money into their pockets, they don't give a damn about y'all. They don't care. They, you know, they're you had a fight for right to repair. They sue a company helping the cause they, they didn't try to work with the little company that I heard there was a little company in New York that was making batteries um, to help people who had fried batteries on their one wheels or just had battery issues and FM comes in and right for the jugglers, sues them. No, you can't help our customers. Only we can help our customers. And when we do, we're going to charge them an arm and a leg. And then you don't notify also, again, a lot of this information I've, I've seen on other YouTube videos. If you unplug the battery, the wheel breaks on you. Then you got those one wheels that are just ghost you. Not to not to mention, I think more people have died on one wheels than any other PEV. Maybe e-bikes and e-scooters can be close to that. But the thing with e-bikes and e-scooters is it's usually when, when they pass away, it's the rider's fault. 
usually, typically, just riding crazy or, but on one wheels, and it seems like anyone can over torque those things. Anybody can, can overpower, that's the word. Anyone can overpower a one wheel. Um, and one thing that really made me want to talk about this is I noticed there's this one YouTube channel that, um, that I like, it's freshly charged, I believe. And they used to be somewhat critical of the one wheel. Then they had a meeting with the people over at FM. And ever since that meeting, they've been saying really nice things about the one wheel. And I'm just, it, it's kind of cringy because if you look at the comments, no one's agreeing with it. They're like, oh, here's the overpriced pint. And then here's the overpriced GT this. And now you got this new wheel. It's better than the last wheel. Okay, so I just shell out. I just shelled out three thousand dollars, and now you're telling me that I should get rid of that and get this new one. So spend another three, four thousand dollars. Like, I just don't understand one wheelers who deny the fact that the company that you put money into their pockets, they treat you like absolute garbage. It's a monopoly. There's no competition, and I know there's the float wheel now and another one maybe that's kind of creeping in but even the form factor yeah it's pretty portable but the fact that they can just dump you i call them collarbone breakers and and this has become a this video is going to be half ranking half crapping on the one wheel because i still see one wheels showing up to group rides and sadly they almost they literally never make it to the end on my personal group ride that I host, they can make it because my group ride is super family friendly. The Worcester Takeover, that's anybody can ride in that. That's super family friendly. But on any other group ride, these guys are getting left behind. They don't have the range. They don't have the speed. And <laughs> when you see accidents, like if you look at the Boston Invasion videos, if you see any accidents, it's probably going to be a guy on a one wheel flipping over and falling. I mean, these, those little, I think they suck. I really do think the one wheels suck. And, and again, this is not towards the people who ride one wheels. I think you all are awesome and you should upgrade to a real PEV, like an e-skate, an e-scooter, an e-bike, an EUC, um, maybe even a hoverboard, just kidding. <laughs> but I just don't, I, I don't agree. I, customer service is a very big thing for me. And when you treat the people who put money into your pockets, when you treat them as badly as FM has treated its customers, why anyone would continue to put money in their pockets is beyond me. And I know for a fact, FM put some money. They, in my opinion, I can't say fact because I wasn't there, but I'm almost positive that FM put some money in freshly charged pockets and was like, just can you talk nice about us, please, please? Because their reviews are just kind of weird. They, they, I've seen this one review today where the one wheel is even the new one that just came out is still kind of struggling to get up a hill that my M10 three baby wheel, four year old child wheel can do with no problem. So please, PEV riders who still are on a one wheel, do yourself a favor, upgrade, upgrade to a real PEV. Again, e-bike, e-scooter, e-skate, E U C get yourself something and at least there's different companies there's competition they won't try to stiff you and they're not trying to take obviously they want your money but they're not going to try to rob you basically which is what FM has been doing to its very loyal customers so you know hopefully y'all get with the times and dump that thing so one wheel is the worst PEV the most garbage PEV based because it's overpriced and you could save thousands of dollars on other PEVs that will have better specs. One PEV that I forgot to mention was the hoverboard. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Um, what can I say? I, I think it's a, it's kind of a neat kid's toy. I think it's kind of neat to get around, but I, I think I would rather actually have a ho the hover shoes than the hoverboard. So I would put the hoverboard at number eight actually and then the one wheel being number nine the worst <laughs> okay but anyway so that is my rankings of pevs from let's say nine to one electronic unicycle for the win and i'm out